All right, for the second part of the baby build, we'll be building the gantry. So, what we'll need are the, I don't need this right now. We need the Y end, the um, X motor mount, and uh, and N2, the uh, X end, the Y slider, and the X slider. A um, couple things to note here. This is the 10.5 um, Y slider, and it has a little bit of a weakness here. This part here may break off. If it does, that's okay. You can keep going. Um, first thing we're going to do is put the Y end stop screw in. This is so you can adjust the distance from the nozzle to the belt as it homes, so you don't have to do it through software. So this is your end stop adjuster here. I'll go ahead and just feed it through. Until it's just good enough as a halfway point. All right, so the way this works is your three millimeter, 150 millimeter long rods are your linear bearings. And then we're using um, three mil ID, four mil OD, PTFE as the bearing surfaces. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to assemble the Y section, because the X sections, because once we assemble the Y motor on, it's harder to tension the Y belt, the X belt, sorry. So the very first thing we need to do is find this little Allen key here, and just clear up if there's any residual little bits from the printing process. Clean it up. So the belt goes in here, where the Allen key is. I'll make that more clear later. All right, so take, first thing we're gonna do is take some PTFE tubing. We're gonna cut it to length. And 9.6 and 9.7 versions and beyond should have little lips to help hold this PTFE tubing in so that it doesn't slide out. We've already added that to the Y slider here. There's little lips right on the end there to keep the PTFE from coming out. All right. So we grab our trusty zip ties. And we feed them through. Sorry for the bird in the background. There's no mute on a parrot if anybody's ever owned one. They can attest to that. He knows I'm recording, and he likes to be nice and obnoxious whenever I'm on the phone or recording a video. So take the PTFE tubing, put the rod through it so we don't overcrush it. And I like to make sure the ends of the PTFE tubing are nice and not kinked. And we just cinch those down. We don't have to he man tight them. Just make them tight enough that the PTFE won't slide out of the zip ties. So that's nice and perfect right there. The same thing on this end. And like I said, when I put the bearing in, the rod in, kind of wiggle it around a little bit and slide it so that it gets nice and loose. It's not kinked on a cut end. to make sure that, oh, so that's not tight enough. Yeah, it's nice and tight now. And I don't like cutting these ends off super short right away, so that you can still get in there with a pair of pliers and tighten them up if necessary. All right, now that we have that, we can mount our motor in the end. And just like before, with the uh, um, with the extruder gear, I like putting one caught one uh, set screw 
right on the flat side of the motor and tighten that one down nice and tight first. It's a two millimeter Allen key. And then doing the second one, there we go. Now I can take this, and this may require, depending on your printing capabilities, some slight tuning right here to get the motor to fit nicely, but it should go in and snap in place. And we use two 10 mil screws. And again, these motors have already been modified. So the last video, I've put the rest of the screws in the extruder for the base, as well as put the tensioner screw for the filament in the extruder body, and put the Z motor screw, the Z motor in. I'll show that in a second. I know it's a little out of order. Sorry. The rest of the screws in. I put the tensioner in here. This is going to get reworked eventually, but you just use a set uh, set nut in there with a nut there, and then I put this in with two 10 mil screws. So, anyways, back to this now. We have this set up here. We have this here. So we're going to take this guy here, and we're going to feed the rods in. And because this is printed this way, sometimes. You make sure the holes are clear of any kind of flashing or anything else like that. Elf footing, that kind of thing. They should slide on. Sometimes you have to give them a little bit of persuasion. Like that. And this Y slider here. And I notice the holes or on the, I wouldn't say the upper parts, but the uh, holes are not centered, and they only go on one way. Just cleaning this, these holes here out, quick. Before I put that on, actually, I'm going to take and put our idler bearing in. And that just self-taps in. So you want to make sure that the screw goes through into the other side of the plastic piece and doesn't just deform it and push it out. I'm having problems with this pulley here. No, it's my screw. There we go. Yep, yeah, just slide right through. right into the other side here. And again, I know I'm going fast. I'm just trying to make this video not super boring. To make it super long. Other side here. Put down these two holes. Should snap in, and these rods should go parallel. If they don't, just work it a little bit. get a nice axis. There we go. So this should slide nicely. Still not perfectly parallel, but we'll get it there. We take the pull of the belt now. And the belt is a little interesting the way it's routed. It goes, easiest way to do it is in like this. And here, remember we cleaned that out earlier. You see this little stop here? The belt should not go into that stop. It should go just short of it. You can take a zip tie and feed it from underneath one of these little holes. Up, back, down, around. And sometimes it helps a little bit to bend the zip tie so that you can get it back through these holes here. If you're having a really hard time you can do it without the belt in place. Don't cinch the zip tie down. And then uh, once you get the zip tie looped, then you can put the belt in and tighten it down on the belt. This 
them nice and tight so the belt doesn't come out. And I messed up. I didn't feed it through there, so. The belt needs to go inside the plastic around the pulley. And then back inside the plastic again. And I didn't do that. That's why I had to refeed it right there. Cut this tail off to make things tidy. And this goes the same way through here. Inside the plastic. Around the pulley. And then like that. Oops. Alright. So obviously we need to cut this belt shorter. It's because it's a belt for both pieces. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the loop here, make a loop in the in it here, and this loop here is how we tension it. So I'm gonna cut the belt. Here. Get this out of the way. Take a zippy. And make a loop in the belt about even with the end of the X carriage. Get it all tight. That's way too long. And they have to end up trimming that belt a little bit. There we go. Let's just make a loop in the belt. Just care with a zip tie. Like that. Get it nice and tight because we don't want it slipping. Cut the tail off. Another zip tie, and this is something that's going to be fixed here. The tolerances are just so tight in these um, parts here that what can be printed and what can be designed are two totally different things. So I'm going to put a little hook in the end of the zip tie here. And we're going to feed this. If you look, there's a little U channel in there. You can just see through the printing. And it's going to go in that U channel, in and around. back out. I'm going to take that zip tie there, feed it through the loop in the belt we made, and then tighten the whole thing up. And voila, our x-axis is done. Still a little crooked. taking it on the edge of the table here, driving it together with a socket wrench. That can be, uh, there we go, that can be done better by just cleaning up a little better before start assembly. But that, we'll tighten the belt down. We don't need to get this belt He-Man tight. This is not a Voron or anything else like that, so our speeds are not going to be affected by that. We can trim up the zip. I like to leave a little bit of a tail so we can tighten up later and trim a little bit more of the belt tail off. And there you go. There's that. So now, we can assemble the Y-axis. It's very similar, same way. These holes are gonna be tightened up a little bit more in 9.6. So we measure. Cut the PTFE tubing. Make them both the same length. We have a little bit left over, that's nice. Get the holes unsmushed. Put them on. And again, I'm sorry for my bird. He is being a bird. Now before I like putting this part here on, I like putting the hot end on, because it makes it easier later to put, the, to put it on now than to put it on later. So here's the hot end. Now 
I like leaving the boot on. I just tested to make sure this is tight. I like leaving the boot on, but obviously that's going to cause some issues unless we take it and we trim off the back section here so that it won't hit the belt. Just did there. Trim that off. And I learned that from Carl that did the White Knight Mac 3D designs. He taught me that one. That's a good little trick there. They need to be trimmed up a little bit more, but hey, it's good for now. I'm going to pop the PTFE out just to make this easier to see and to do. So I'm going to take the Y slider here, and the nozzle should be as far away from the Y slider as possible so we get maximum print build area. And that goes on with an M3 by 20 screw right here. Find my Allen key. There it is. down. to take the fan. This is where I said this part here could snap. That's during this process. We're going to clean this up a little bit because it's a tight fit. I'm going to get rid of any little bit of support or whatever. I like to put the fan in so it's blowing on the hot end with the wire facing the same way as the hot end wires. And there's a little lip right there that catches in the edge of the fan. So we only need one screw to securely hold the fan. And again, if this little plastic bit here breaks, it's no big deal. It's basically a built-in support piece. Use a 20 mil screw for this, because the fan is big and it broke. That's okay. because this hole here, the screw is going into the rest of the way, is tapped for 20 millimeters. So you could bottom the whole screw all the way out in it, and it would not care. That being said, a little flash, and didn't clear it all that well, so. It's in the way. For sake of expediency, I'm just going to grab a new screw. It's going a little crooked, but that's okay. Fan on. And it's starting down anyway. So there you go. There's the assembled Y slider. Oops. It goes on like so. Take some more zip ties. Sometimes it's okay if you want to, it's always okay, but if you want to just get the zip ties on there loosely, 
We're not fighting and trying to balance everything. I made that too long. Didn't measure that right. Again, I'm trying to do this fast, so I apologize. It's getting boring, or fidgety. Tighten these down too much, just enough that we get nice, good, constrained axes. Cut these tails here off. Leave enough that we can tune it up a little bit. All right, so now we're going to take the Y end and a bearing, and we are going to, not a bearing, a pulley, put this all together. Another 20 millimeter screw. Can we only use 20 and 10 mil screws, M3 screws in this whole build? That and zip ties is the only fasteners we use in the whole thing. Sorry, I did not mean to take that out of frame. I think this pulley is fighting me. has tighter than 3 mil tolerance. Oh well. We have some tricks for that. Like that. There we go. It's in. <laughs> and then make sure these holes are clear of flashing. These holes have been tightened up a little bit, um, as are the um, X slider holes going to be tightened up a little bit so that this whole assembly fits together a little bit. Thank you, Shane from Otter's Danger Den. He uh, recommended that we do that because we've moved to tighter tolerance printers for our prototyping. Actually, I think this might be one of the tighter ones. Um, in there, like that, and then the belt. Um, let's put the pulley on right now, but you do not want to mount the motor until after the uh, belt has been installed in that section because it's difficult to get the belt through. I'm using the wrong Allen key. An M2, not an M1.5. There we go. I'm just going to take the belt and we're going to feed it up and through and around, just like on the X axis. And then move it around down here. Take this guy here, put it down in there. These two 10 mil screws. Center this back in the frame, sorry. Screw these in. Put it to the bite. Up. 
buddy. And note there are some extraneous holes in some of these parts from earlier iterations. Like the X slider here has a hole down there that was used for an end stop switch back before I went to sensorless end stop homing. And the earlier versions from 9.4 and back had a fan on the side here instead of a fan in the back. And that's where the hot end fan was mounted. But it was very easy for people to get confused as to how that mounted. And this way actually cools better. So we did it that way. Um, as a note, I'm planning on making a fan duct to go in between the fan and the hot end to keep things a little cooler. Because I noticed at Earth and the high humidity, high heat environment, if I printed for more than about four hours, I started to get some bad heat creep. All right. So now that's in. There we go. I'm going to take a loop, make a loop in the belt here, just like we did for the x-axis. Oops. Nice and tight. And do another loop here. And make it so they're just shy of each other, of course, so we can tighten things down. This is how we're going to tension this axis. blocking, sorry. There we go. Cut the zippies. Put those both nice and tight first, of course. And cut the excess belt off. And now, I'm going to take these two, put the zip tie through them, to get the belt nice and tight. And again, I like leaving some tail on this so we could tighten it in the future. Tuck it down in there. And then take some zip ties and feed it through the section to see what the blocks. The blocks are in there so that you can get the belt nice and tight without affecting the PTFE slider tolerances. So that you can get these and it won't bind on the PTFE belt. Tighten this up a little bit more. Get that tight, but not like super Voron tight. I like taking this zip tie here and feeding it in at a diagonal so that around that zip tie so that we can get a little bit better tension on that. So that shouldn't, yep, that's good. That shouldn't move. With the belt, or that should move with the belt that shouldn't have any slack in the belt. So there you go, there's that. So there's this gantry all done. Um, again, we adjust this by adjusting this here, the Y end stop. But now uh, we could do some finishing touches, like this little clip over here, is so that we don't strain the X, the Y motor wires. It helps capture them and keep them nice and tidy. And then we can go over here and we can install it. So this should now snap. Oh, zip ties in the way, that's why. 
and like that. Alrighty guys, that's the basic build. Next we're going to do the electronics and wiring. Thanks for hanging in here.